I in the presence of these persons here present pledge the highest standards of moral professional and ethical conduct I pledge to uphold preserve protect and defend the constitution of the Ghana Institution of Engineering. Almost everybody trained here it's, it's the hard skills that attention is paid to. The soft skills, which is uh, known as the employability skills. And that takes about 70% of, 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 of the quality of, of a professional is ignored. The Ghana Institution uh, of Engineering is playing that role. They've brought together these people and given them that kind of training and they have been supported uh, by uh, uh, being given tools and, my, and, and machinery to set up their businesses and then giving financial um, uh, support by linking them to, to banks. That is, that is um, um, an incubation app and they have taken the lead in that. So what is going to happen is that Ghana Tibet Service is going to collaborate a lot more with uh, the Ghana Institution of Engineering because that is what the country needs. We train and then the engineering institution bids them and gets a, 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 a well-baked uh, workforce for the, for the workplace. And um, apart, apart from them playing that role, um, TVET, TVET Services is, is, is looking at uh, sending uh, students to, to workplaces so that they have the workplace experience learning and we will we'll be doing a lot a lot of that in collaboration with with um, with the Ghana um, Institution of Engineering so that the people that we have in this country would have more professionals than before and this would change the narrative. So my name is John Chamond Duty. I am the team leader of the project called uh, Special Initiative on Training and Job Creation, branded Invest for Jobs. It is a program that is funded by the German government through the Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development and implemented by us, GIZ, here in Ghana. The Professionalization of Artisans project is one of the many projects that we, GIZ, are implementing to support in the job creation agenda of the Ghana government, and of course funded by the German government, as I said. This project aims at training at least 10,000 artisans to professionalize them so that they become members, craftsmen of the Ghana Institution of Engineering so that any one of us who access their service will be guaranteed of quality works as compared to what we experience when we engage ordinary artisans on the street. So today, for example, marks the beginning of the uh, induction of a lot that we've trained already into the Ghana Institution of Engineering. We are doing this project in partnership with the Consolidated Bank of Ghana. The, uh, Vodafone Ghana, the Artisans Association of Ghana, the four training institutions, and uh, uh, Bosch. Bosch, they uh, trade in uh, state-of-the-art tools here uh, in Ghana, and of course, the Ghana Institution of Engineering. As the financial partner for this program, 
Our role is to offer financial advice and mentoring session for the artisans who benefited from this program. So during our sessions, we advise them on regularizing their businesses or registering their businesses if they haven't done that already. We also told them about the importance of bookkeeping and the fact that they need to keep records should they want to seek financial assistance in the future. We also explained our terms and conditions and our requirements for opening an account and accessing finance. We think that our role to this whole program is very important in the sense that we have um, they've acquired knowledge, they have access to tools, but then one important aspect of business is to have access to finance. And we all appreciate that MS as micro, small and medium enterprises have a lot of challenges in Ghana, including access to finance, access to markets, and access to good information that would help their businesses grow. So I think this program has brought together all the relevant stakeholders to solve all these problems. We have Bosch offering advice and tools. We have CBG on the finance side, and then we have Vodafone also coming on board with a platform that will help them access new markets. So I think this program has been very successful, and we hope to roll it out to the targeted 10,000 artisans that um, initially we said we would do. Today I was really honored to be part of GHIE. This really means a lot to me because I get to be recognized and I can work efficiently and uh, very comfortably anyway because I know I'm part of a well-recognized and reputable organization now. And hopefully this should take me far where I can really do a good job, show my skill to everyone and also I'm very confident that with this opportunity I can get to do a lot more efficient work and uh, be well recognized as well. So my name is Millicent Agbomabiel. I'm a chemical engineer with a little over four years experience in the manufacturing industry, precisely the first moving consumer goods sector. I work with Oma Africa as a process engineer. So I'm basically into process and manufacturing and what we do is to convert raw materials into useful products. Um, so I would want to share one experience with the young engineers and I hope they take that into consideration and if they do it will go a long way to helping their career. So proud to join in the corporate world, I thought all I ever needed to succeed was job related skills and also the hard skills. But then I, I was wrong. Getting into the industry has taught me that you need more than the hard skills or the job related skills to thrive well and also have an edge in the industry. So you would need a good measure of the hard skill as well as the soft skills. So soft skills, I mean Microsoft Suite. So something like Excel and PowerPoint are very powerful tools you can literally not do without in the industry. These things make you versatile and also make you stand out in the field. Other soft skills like emotional intelligence, effective communication and good time management would also go a long way to make you professionally stronger. Aside from being professionally stronger too, it can make you a good team player as well as an effective and efficient leader as and when the need arises. So in addition to that, we have all the time we have in this world. This is the time to learn and develop ourselves. So I keep telling people that we all have 24 hours in the day, but then how well I use my 24 hours is what makes me different from the other person. We should always remember that time spent is a cost, and you should be mindful of the benefits you are incurring or you are exchanging for the costs you are incurring. So the time is now, the time to invest yourself is now, the time to improve and develop upon yourself is now. So use the time wisely and you will never regret it. Uh, my name is Ogusu Edu Kofi. I'm the founder and CEO of Soko Area Robotics, a private UAV defense company established in Ghana in partnership with the Ghana Armed Forces. 
Currently, we have a center of excellence that is uh, handling research, development, and education to support both the military and our Navy. We also engage in quite a good number of civil projects to support aerial surveillance and also topographic applications and other applications as well. My advice to the youth as well as the current engineers is that we need to serve and by so doing we get to learn from the right mentors and also learn the hidden trade secrets and skills that we need in order to find ourselves within the future. And we can't do this if we don't do the right things or we don't put in the right practices. And the most important thing is that we have to engage ourselves in projects. Don't stick to only what you are taught in school. Go beyond that and things will really, really line up for you. So basically, today's program has really been insightful and inspiring for me because as a young female engineer, it's already a lot to break through the barrier of the male-dominated field. But I learned a lot today that has really helped me in understanding that as an engineer, I need to be ready to create, to put out more out there. And then being a woman in this field, I've realized you don't need to be fearful. You just need to keep pushing on and on. And then no, absolutely no, I mean, bad feelings to the fact that you're a woman to make you come bring you down because the men are going to be mainly as usual but then we just hope in the future the barrier of gender is really broken down and it's beautiful to be an engineer and i love this well i see myself being very innovative in my field i'm a dramatic engineer and dramatic is very broad so i like to really specialize in one particular part of it which i like to maybe keep on the low for now and then work more towards it and then help change the path of engineering in the country, mostly Africa and even more the world. Thank you. When you're a young person, the attractions are more. And currently there's a lot of pressure in our system for young people to seemingly appear that they are excelling and they are succeeding in life. And those things are what would compromise your ethics and professional practice. Um, but I always ask people that if money wasn't a factor, will you do what you're doing? My name is Ya Obinewa Okujato. I am a member of the Ghana Institution of Engineering. I'm also a council member. I am the chairperson of the Education and Training Committee. Um, I've had the opportunity to serve on the panel today on ethics and professional practice. Uh, to me, it's a very important aspect of engineering because for all of us, we want the systems to work. And for the systems to work, what do we believe in? What is our value? What are our values and what do we stand for? And ethics represents that aspect of engineering that is not technical, but it's an innate thing that we need to bring to bear. Um, the training aspect of ethics, the policy guidelines, all of those things are there. But at the end of the day, if we do not practice what we believe in, then the profession does not progress. Uh, we had an excellent panel today who spoke on different aspects of it. Um, one thing that I am taking away from this conference is the fact that we all do know what needs to be done. We do have the, uh, the theories on things that need to be done on um, ethics in the professional practice, but are we doing those things? Um, one aspect that needs to be thoroughly looked at is the security aspect, which means that at the end of the day, if I speak up for what is right, who protects me and so we've spoken as an institution and we need to formalize and strategize and find ways of ensuring that when people stand for the truth and they speak for what is right they are protected I am engineer Trudy Morgan 
the president of the Sierra Leone Institution of Engineers. I'm here in Ghana specifically for the Ghana Institute of Engineers conference with the theme Engineering Key to Achieving National Development. I think I'm really excited about being here because even in my country, Sierra Leone, a lot of the conversation recently has been on the fact that engineers play a very significant role in national development. But unfortunately, the importance which we have in that development is sometimes misplaced, misunderstood, and not taken seriously. So it's interesting to be part of the conversation, to hear what colleagues from Ghana and Nigeria are saying about our contribution to achieving national development. Um, I've enjoyed myself tremendously uh, whilst I've been here. I've been given um, an amazing welcome. I'm not here alone, I'm here with my immediate past president, my vice president, and one of our very strong female engineers. And the welcome has been amazing. Akwaba. Um, I think I will go away with the fact that we are in a fight to achieve engineering professionalism and excellence, but we're not alone. It's a fight that is happening in Ghana, in Nigeria, and where I'm from, in Sierra Leone. And I'm looking forward to working with my colleagues right across the sub-region to make sure that we get the Africa that we want, the West Africa that we desire, and our individual countries get the excellent engineers that they require. My name is Engineer Ejika Emmanuel Oshala from the Nigerian Society of Engineers. I'm the personal assistant to the president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. Uh, so far, so good. The conference has been going well, and the conference has touched down on areas that are bordering on Africa's infrastructural development as regarding transportation, our infrastructural development, water and waste management. And I think um, every discussions that are made at this conference are important, and what we should do as engineers uh, is to ensure that we build a business around our natural resources and see how we make good economic return out of this and also help in developing these infrastructures to better mankind because that is all and what engineering is. The application of science and technology to develop the world and for the betterment of uh, mankind for technological advancement and innovation. So uh, I'm pretty much the conference has gone well in organization, materials, free flow, feeding, all is good. And the discussions and participation so far, top notch. What I think we can do better in engineering is uh, having to synergize politically. Engineers don't uh, practice politics. And uh, what we have discovered, even in Nigeria, is to see that aside from our technical know-how, we are so concerned about our professional career, about our skills. That is not enough. We need to get into politics so that we can be part of policy making and we can ensure that this politics and uh, professional practice marry. That is the only way this can happen because you cannot have a politician help you to to implement or do anything in engineering except you are there and you're able to drive it. And aside from that, we should continue to innovate and pursue our skills. So what I would say uh, going forward for engineering is for engineers to be involved in politics and as well help in advancement of our technology, which means we have to do a lot of trainings, a lot of mentoring, especially for the young ones, because these young ones will have to take on engineering activities and continue with it. So we need to get them trained. We need to open up their minds and they take it up from there. So engineering and politics must have to work. Thank you. I am Engineering says I'll be I work with the Quality Assurance Department in Ashanti SBU. 
So as engineers, this conference is teaching us that we need to contribute to national development. So in my own small way, I would ensure that the quality standards are met so that in totality, the nation will benefit from quality, reliable power supply. In ECG, we, we have adopted together with Big Wine, that is the main wine, Wine Ghana, we have adopted mentoring. So we try to go down as low as primary school to help the kids. We mentor them to inspire their um, um, interest in STEM, that is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. In our, um, our, our professional level too, we have adopted peer-to-peer -peer mentoring. So at the end of the day, it is my hope that in the next five years, yes, we've had one president, a female president, but it's my hope that subsequent years, we will have more female engineers um, being president and we will brighten the corner wherever we are. We have a lot of role models nowadays, so we shouldn't be intimidated, but rather we should reach out to the sky for the sky is definitely the limit. And without engineering, we are not going anywhere. Engineering is key for development. Thank you. My name is Nana Sewa Champon. I'm the National Treasurer for the Ghana Bar Association. I was here at the behest of the President of the Ghana Bar Association upon the invitation of the Ghana Institution of Engineers who are currently holding their 52nd Annual General Conference 2022. It's been my great pleasure to be part of their opening ceremony, which was very, very insightful, very thought-provoking, with the speeches and all the things that went on. Uh, in terms of our input when it comes to engineering, the law and engineering, what can we say? Well, we are the ones who advise. So the advice we can give is that in doing your engineering, please pay heed to all the rules and the regulations of the game, especially the rules of the public procurement law. You know, oftentimes engineers, you know, I think they're very busy taking care of, you know, the nitty gritty of the construction process. And maybe you don't pay much heed to, you know, the law as it comes, you know, as it concerns procurement and all those sort of things. But my advice is that take time, know what is expected of you within the confines of the procurement rules, abide by it stringently and strictly, because at the end of the day, as a professional, certain standards are expected of you. So even though you may think it might not have much to do with you, it will if something goes wrong. I want to say that it's been an honor and a pleasure for me to stand in for the president of the Ghana Bar Association at this annual conference, the 52nd, for the, and, the, and the one in the year 2022, this groundbreaking conference, which has seen a lot of participation from engineers across the length and breadth of this nation. I am so happy to have connected with my professional colleagues in the engineering field, and I hope that I'll have the pleasure of joining them at the next annual general conference sometime next year. Thank you so much for inviting me. We've been collecting accident data over the past 30 years. And for us, we believe that it is high time we begin to build resilient rules, user-friendly rules, safe rules, so that we can mitigate to a large extent the accidents that we have on our roads. By way of technology, we have a cement high level cement lab, we have advanced material lab, and we have, lab, and we have a geotechnical engineering lab. And as I indicated in the forum, all these labs are going to improve the way we do construction in this country. That is what BRI stands for. And that's what we've been doing over the years.
My name is Engineer Kabna Bimpo, and I am the Vice President for Business Development at Associated Consultants uh, Limited. And here at the institution, I am the President-elect of the Ghana Institution of Engineering. I have been uh, with the current president for the past year, and God willing, next year, 2023, I will be taking over the mantle of leadership. Uh, for this conference, we have experienced some innovation, and you would all agree with me that we have never had an occasion where you've had such an interesting time with so many people attending the, both the AGM and the opening ceremony. And this is what we are looking to, you know, to build them up. So that when we get to Takrade, it's going to be, you know, part, probably the tenth wonder of the world. We are looking at mobilizing a number of people and ensuring that we have a great conference, you know, in Takrade. Now, one of my flagship projects, and this is something that I said as part of my campaign towards my election, among others, is to build a world-class engineering resource center. And I'm looking forward to the participation of each and every member of our institution to realize this vision. Yes, we may not be able to you know, build everything in one day because as we say, Rome was not built in a day. But once we have the vision, a way will be created. So come support us, have a world-class engineering center where we would have innovation hub, we would have places of meeting, we would have places you know, for offices, our secretariat will be there, we will have places where we would you know, um, help people who are you know, just startups to build their own um, firms, areas for training, this will all be in, you know, within, a, pl a place for relaxation, a place for uh, leisure, you know, all that you can think about. This is something that we are looking forward in the year 2023 and beyond. And I pledge that I'm not just going to start this project and leave it. The current president and the ED and all who will be, you know, are all in support of this. And I want the general membership because you gave me, you know, over 70 percent um, votes. And this is something that I believe that you believe in. And this is what we are going to do. This is going to be the way forward for our engineering. Currently, we have about 8,000 members. And with the first facilities that we have here, we are unable you know, to, we are, we are too many for the facility. We need to scale up and become a bigger organization. And we also want to be relevant in national, we want to be relevant in national discourse so that as engineers, our views will be held in high esteem. We will be the voice of reason Whenever there's any engineering issue, we should be the people that we are going to contact. We would want to be visible wherever we go, or even at the institution, people will come to us. And wherever our, uh, our views are required, we as an institution will be ready to give to them. And I'm not going to forget about you, the engineers, and all the occupational groupings. You know, whether you are engineering technologist, you are a craftsman or a technologist, we are going to have an all-inclusive um, you know, leadership, all-inclusive leadership. So let us all come on board and let us build the institution that we want. Ghana Institution of Engineering, promoting engineering excellence. Right, this conference has gone very well. We've had a lot of participation from our members. We've drawn over 300 members to the conference. We also brought in some international delegates from Nigeria, Sri Lanka. We are happy that uh, all the presentations went well. We lots of discussion, food for thought, you know, a lot of interaction. And this is good for networking, you know, exchange of ideas and for building engineering. I mean, it went so well. I'm excited about what we've been able to do. Well, we brought in poster presentations. So we had a lot of young students presenting their works. And I mean, it was fantastic. People enjoyed it. And I'm sure it will give them a lot of uh, uh, morale. They'll be 
uh, energized to go back and work harder. So kudos to all those who took part, the students, the lecturers, the practitioners, the consultants. We had industry resource persons and that was wonderful. We also were able to have the biodigester from the Ministry of Sanitation. That was also launched. So it was fantastic and to give us the opportunity to train craftsmen so they can build it properly and, you know, get the maximum effect from it. Well, we are looking that uh, we'll build on this and then we can expand it to uh, cover the craftsmen as well. The next conference we should make provision for our craftsmen. Our young engineers should be able to have a full day to themselves, you know, fill the day with programs. We are looking at bringing in exhibitors, you know. So we think that we can build on this and make the conference uh, an iconic one, you know. The conference should be one that should, uh, every engineer should aspire to attend within the year. So hopefully the next conference will be able to bring about 500 people. Yes, so we we'll need to think of where to host that. I mean, special thanks to VRA. They were our national partners, and without them, we couldn't have pulled us off. We thank them so much for being consistent in their support to GHIA. The other partners, Ministry of uh, Sanitation, we thank them so much. Staff of the Secretariat, members who volunteer their services to make this conference a success. We wish them all very well and we are so thankful to them. We hope that we can repay them for what they've done. I'm so excited about this conference and I'm looking forward to the next conference in Takra. GHIE promoting engineering excellence. <laughs>